sure the guys with the cameras did a great job, but there's no way pictures can do justice to what I just experienced. I knew this was going to be a fun job. <clears throat> Actually, I spent a whole day training for this, and it cost several hundred dollars. And even though the risk associated with the jump was probably less than that of, of driving out here this morning, it's pretty clear the skydiving is not for everybody. But a lot of people would like to get the kind of thrill that I just experienced without spending the time and the money and the nerve. And that's the reason that amusement parks are such big business. And that's the reason that the designers of rides are always trying to outdo one another. We wondered how you would design a ride that was both thrilling and safe. So we spent over a year tracking the design and testing of what is, at least for now, the world's ultimate roller coaster. <laughs> People are going to walk up to that thing and look up there and then say, My gosh, that's too big for me. I'm not going to get on it. So, five years ago, Ron began playing with a brand new concept in coasters. Here's how all existing coasters work the twists and turns and ups and downs in the track really forces pushing and pulling on the rider. That's what makes it fun. But always, the greatest force is pushing car and ground against the ground. To demonstrate, we drove the high school physics class as they rode a coaster with their own homemade force wheels. This would mean that on your rear end when you're in that car, you'd feel your normal weight. But as we go around the bottom of that curve, you're going to see this thing pull down to two, three, or three and a half times your normal weight. Coaster technology here that would allow us to feel more like that kind of sensation. We'll be able to roll over, fly along upside down, and you really are upside down. You're hanging upside down, you look down, and there's nothing below you but the ground. There's no tracks, there's nothing there that hold you up. It was this new twist in roller coaster design that Ron and his company, Howard Arnold, decided to explore. This is a really young of a clever story. To create the barrel roll effect, the car sits down in the tracks rather than on it as in a testing process. But to hold it up when it's upside down, it hangs from a second set of wheels. These are big innovations for a roller coaster. And when we joined on in the early stages of development, there were still plenty of questions to answer, 
but just how much initial energy the car would need to avoid the discomfort and the loss of a car. system works fine for good. Okay, how do you feel? I feel really secure. You know, there's no place to go. But can it still do a good job on some investing center? Hero's goal is to fit children four feet in time. Just as four feet four. Okay, hold that down so it's tight. Feel good? Let's go locked in. Okay. The shoulder is great only keeps them from falling forward. So it's up to the left bar to hold it on. Good. Things feel okay here? Okay, your legs are tight. Looks like a good and tight. Your arms, you're holding on a little bit here. Your head's clear. Okay. And you're off the seat. Let's turn it back up. Freeman is increasingly confident his system will hold riders as different in size as Bill and Dusty. Comfortable and secure. There's a partial compromise here. If I was sitting in just for him, I'd probably move this lap bar in another one or two inches. Uh, the way the seat is designed in the lap bar, we've got a range here where we can lock him in securely and as well deal with some of the probably weighs four or five times as much as he does. The breaking and effective mistake system is a problem they've anticipated. But the first time they put a mop up of an entire panel on the truck, there was a nice piece of paper that was still there. Because the car sits down between the lines, when it turns to its battery mode, the rear passengers are brought into the dangerous few features of the car. Boy, look at that. We haven't had to deal with this before. While expected speeds and forces were all carefully calculated, they were based on assumptions about real friction. And this is the first time a poster has alternated riding on top and down wheels. If the friction is less than expected, the poster will run faster than planned, maybe dangerously so. Which is why the first passenger will work in a person, but a machine, an accelerometer. It's much like the students' homemade force models, but it records front and back and side to side forces as well as up and down. Three years after work began, the poster is hoisted into position in its moving way. The starting height is still something of a guess. If it's too low, the car may not pick up enough speed to make it around the track. There's always that that feeling inside, you know, when, what, you know, what can happen that we don't know about, that maybe it'll end up this thing that But with a 
forces reported by the accelerometer in line with predictions, all seems to be right, even in the critical region under the land when the coaster is hanging upside down. So it's safe for a human rider. Who would it be? I don't know, right? I can say it for one thing. I don't know, it's not upside down. It's the engineers who take the first spin. After all, they do it. Bring the lap bars down first. The lap bars on a little bit. And then the windows go up. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 